Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Davis. Thank you for subscribing to Drone Camps and please do because we have new drone stuff coming out each week. And today I have something super cool here. We have a lot of all-in-one flight controller PDB ESC combo stacks coming out and Team Black Sheep started off with one of the first ones available out there. Uh, you can get the, the Team Black Sheep one for around $150. And in the background right here, I also have the FlyPro Tower as well. And that one's also around $150. But this is Fly Color, not to be confused with Fly Pro, but Fly Color has a new one called the Fly Color Raptor. It is an all-in-one 30 amp ESC combo stack with PDB and OSD integrated into it with an F-free flight controller. Now they have two versions of this. You can get the 20 amp or the 30 amp. I have a copy of the 30 amp and I have an extra XT60 connector here uh, ready to solder onto it. And I'll plug it into Betaflight. It comes pre-flashed with Betaflight. Uh, it also has your directions in here. Some pretty decent directions. I'll open those up and show them to you in just a little bit. Uh, but check out this flight controller from the very top. Just gonna move this in a little closer and get it to focus there. Uh, very nice chip layout, and we have boards there all the way around and USB port over here on this side. And it has, very similar to the FlyPro Tower, it has a stack power system here that plugs into the bottom layer where ESCs are housed. And there it goes, flying out of the box. Hopefully it's fine. Um, so let's take a look at this. Now this is pretty cool. This is only two stacks. The TBS tower that they did, their tower, their cube is actually six layers deep. Now we're all the way down to two layers, folks. We're getting to be really, really condensed and short. Uh, what I like to call a short stack. This is what I like. This cleans up all your wires really, really nicely. You've got this power connector on the side here. When you take these off, these plug in together. So be very careful you don't bend those pins, but uh, very, very, very nice. We were doing pinless stuff like a year ago, and now we're getting into even further, further uh, kind of OCD on these setups. I mean, it's unbelievable how streamlined everything is getting. So check those out. Those are the 30 amp ESCs on the very bottom there. Got this purple coating over it. And then the very front uh, was be the rear. These two tabs right here, those two tabs are your positive and your negative pads for your XT60 is gonna come off the back here. And you have various other connectors around here, which I'll, I'll show you in just a minute. Uh, also here you have where your motor wires connect in the back and in the front, we also have the other motor wire connectors here. So ESCs are tucked up inside here and no ESCs hanging out on the arms to make this one uh, any, any more messy. So getting super, super clean. Let me go ahead and take this top nuts off here and I'll show you what this ESC looks like under here. Okay guys, now we get to look at these a little closer up and we have these 30 amp ESCs here with the built-in OSD and PDB. And we have the connectors back here for the first motor, motor one, up here, motor two, motor three, and motor four up here. And in the middle here, these two middle tabs, those are where your XT60 cable is gonna come off the back. So it's actually labeled V plus here and V negative. And V plus, obviously your positive cable and your ground cable over here on this side. So go ahead and solder those up. Uh, they are a little bit close together, but if you use a little smaller gauge wire, not that super fat um, wire, it should fit in there a little better. So uh, I would like some more space in between these, but I'm not gonna complain for $79. This is uh, pretty pretty awesome. And everything seems to, to be purple these days. All the cool stuff is purple. I don't know how that's happening. These schizo motors and uh, this fly color Raptor, this is really neat. So you have your power pins here that stick up off this side. Be careful when you plug those in that you don't bend these uh, or move them at all because this has to plug into your flight controller up here. Uh, and they are both labeled. They have arrows pointing forward here. This one has an arrow over on this side right above the pins pointing forward so that you don't get this mixed up, um, put it on wrong while you're 
you're building your stack. It's a very simple stack, two pieces, and that's it. That's that's what this is all about, simplicity. Now, you have uh, some other things on um, the top that we can talk about. We can talk about where SBUS plugs in, because most of us are going to be using SBUS. Um, so the very top over here, in the very front, this side right here is going to be where your 12 volt camera plugs into. This is the smaller one here. Uh, you have signal, 12 volt, and ground on that one. The larger one right by the USB cable here, that's going to be your SBUS receiver port. You do have cables in the box that's included with this. You just plug in and solder right up to your uh, receiver. So super cool there. I'm going to be using an FR Sky X4R with this one. Now, the next one over, um, we have the. Uh, Now the next, the next part over is the boot pins. There's two pins right here, and you'll have to put two pins in and short those pins out so you can get this board to reflash for updating your firmware on here. I wish it was a button, but then again, I'm not going to complain for a $79 all-in-one flight controller. Pretty cool. Um, so the next thing we have is this data transmission. Uh, it says on the on the, the label and the, the diagram for the user manual, it says data transmission 7 and 8, uh, 9 and 10. And what that is is for PWM. If you're going to use every single wire going to um, a PWM type receiver, that's, that's for that. Uh, the next one over is your ISP programming connector. And I'm probably not going to use that. But on the very bottom, let's take a look at the bottom now and flip this up so it matches the diagram. And we have a couple more ports on the bottom. This thing is loaded. Uh, so over here on the right hand side, I have a wire that's going to plug in and it does two things on that connector port. It does buzzer and it also does LEDs on this side. And on the diagram, it says one, two, three. It's missing wire number four and then it says five and six. And five and six are for the buzzer, five being for five volt, six being for your ground for the buzzer. Um, I don't know why they have it labeled like that. They're missing a wire in there, but that's the way it goes. You can actually take that other wire out, that number four wire, if you know what you're doing. Uh, and you can save a little bit of weight. Not a big deal. Now, the next one over here is for image transmitter. You've got VBAT, VBAT Plus over here, ground, and signal. So that's about it for the two boards. Let's go ahead and plug these back in together and uh, I'll get an XT60 on this one and we'll power it up and we'll put it into beta flight and I'll show you some of the specifics in beta flight for the setup. Okay so I have my XT60 cable here and it's soldered onto the positive and negative tab for the battery connector and before I plug this in for the first time I'm gonna use a smoke stopper on here because I don't want a chance frying this $79 flight controller uh, PDB combo. You want to protect that uh, for the first time you plug it in. This is a little deal I got from uh, Hobby King. I'll put the link down below for one of these if I can find it for you. But look it up on their website. I think it's around 6 or $7 and it has a little fuse inside here. And if you have a short anywhere on the board, this will save you from frying your board. Uh, this little light will light up red. You'll know you have some kind of bad solder somewhere or something, uh, something touching, either maybe top or bottom or somewhere where you made a solder joint. So very important that you use one of those. And I gotta give a shout out to VCANs. Um, they've been providing me with some batteries for several years now, uh, great supporters of my channel. These are some super durable batteries. I have beat the crap out of these batteries. This one has taken a huge beating um, and it's still, it hasn't even started puffing yet. Um, and this one's, this one's really survived some pretty terrible crashes. Uh, so we're going to use that one in the video when I plug it in for the first time. And you'll see some LEDs light up on the top here. Uh, but I'll go ahead now. I'm going to hook it up to Betaflight first and then we'll, uh, we'll open up the ESCs in BL Heli Suite on my Mac and I'll show you the the uh, ESC setup on there. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and plug in the USB cable to the side of the F flight controller. Make sure you plug it in nice and firm and it seats well. And now we're open in beta flight and I can check my 
orientation here on that first screen. Everything looks right on the orientation. Now let's go over to ports and it should be set up. Let's see, Serial RX uh, is set up to UART3 and that's pretty standard for setting up SBUS. Um, that looks okay. We'll go into the configuration and I have one shot 125 enabled and I am able to do that with those ESCs because I have VL Heli S on there. That's um, super cool. Now you can change some of these parameters in here a little bit later if you need to depending on your motors and you can check out your minimums throttle for your motors uh, using BL Heli. Just do a little throttle up on each motor and find out what the minimum throttle amount uh, value is for that and put it here. Like I said that depends on um, which motors you use. And now over here RX mode we have RX serial and we already have S bus selected there so we're good there and if everything is good you did something different here, maybe you're using PPM or parallel PWM like I mentioned before, you can save and be reboot there. Now for failsafe, I always have it set to drop, so I'm just going to put mine on drop. If I have any signal loss from the transmitter, I want mine to just stop what it's doing and hit the ground. I don't want it to fly anywhere. Uh, PID tuning, that depends on the quad and the prop setup you have, depending on how big or small it is. Uh, receiver, I'm going to do S bus, and that's going to be FR Sky. That's going to be X4R. And we have our mode channel in here. We can get in there and set those up. And you have your motors tab here. Once you get your motors soldered up to the PDB, you can uh, go ahead and test your motor directions here first before you go into the uh, Heli Suite. Now we're all done here, and I'll just check in the CLI for you. I'll type in version, and this is how you find out which version's on your flight controller without having to look at the rest of that. Another way to do it is type in dump, D-U-M-P, hit return, and it shows you all your data, including the latest version. So we're on August 2nd, uh, SP Racing F3 on here, so pretty cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna back out of Betaflight, and we're gonna go into BO Heli Suite. I'm gonna show you some information on these ESCs on board. Okay guys, go ahead and open up Chrome and go to the Chrome Web Store, type in BL Heli here like I did on the screen, and you'll see BL Heli Configurator, so finally we get BL Heli on the Macintosh, thank God, because uh, I've been jumping back and forth from a PC to a Mac for years, and uh, that's just kind of the way it goes if you're a Mac guy sometimes, uh, if you don't want to run boot camp. Now I'll go ahead and launch the app and uh, you'll get this very familiar dialogue pop-up. It looks very similar to beta flight or clean flight or uh, race flight. Now I've got my USB cable connected here to the flight controller and I also have my smoke stopper set up plugged in. But to get your ESCs to load and connect on your laptop uh, for BL Heli Suite you need to plug in a battery. So we're going to do that now using the smoke stopper to make sure that we don't fry anything. Okay, now that I have power to the ESCs, I can go ahead and press connect here. Okay, now we're in BL Heli Suite for Mac. I'll make this just a little bit bigger. Try to make it full screen so you guys can see some of the data on these ESCs. Now, this is your ESC stack right here, one, two, three, four. And um, you can see that you have your motor direction here. Now, this is new to some of you, so um, you've never seen this before. Originally in BL Heli Suite was a lot more complicated looking than this. Uh, so they simplified a lot of this for us. And we can check out what version is on here um, as well. It looks like 14.6 is on here. And let's see here, we can reverse and we can do bi-directional. So that would be a 3D configuration type setup. So if you have a motor direction that's wrong, you're just going to go in here and select ESC number one, which would um, correspond with motor one, motor two, motor three, and motor four on your flight controller. And if you want to do an update, you can do that as well inside here. Uh, you can do them one at a time. And when you f select flash firmware, it's going to say 20 amp ESC, but you're actually running this 30 amp, uh, 390, 30 amp. Let's see, fly color. 30 amp. Okay, version 2, 30 amp. Uh, and this is, let's see, 390, that's that's correct. Okay, and we have a multi, and then we have the version all the way up to 14.8. Uh, 
So that's the latest version that's on there. We'll go ahead and select that and I'll do a flash on that particular ESC. And when we update this one, we're going to go ahead and update the other ones as well. And we do have damped light on here as well. Okay. So that one's been updated to 14.8. You see that there at the top of the screen? Now the next one down says 14.6, so we'll say flash firmware there. Uh, we'll leave that set to 390 20 amp. And we will say flash when we get that set up. It'll go through the process. We'll do that for these other two, three and four. And then we'll have the latest and greatest BL Heli on there. Uh, I have had some quads actually fly a little bit funny if BL Heli wasn't updated on them, uh, if it was an old version. Even a few versions back, I've had issues with it. So make sure you update your ESCs, guys. Uh, we'll do 14.8 there on that one, and flash. And you can play around with some of these other settings on the left over here, the common parameters, but I would probably leave a lot of this alone if you're not familiar with it. Okay, number three is done. Now we'll go flash firmware on number four. We'll select the current version, 14.8, and flashing the last one. Now we should be all up to date. So very, very, very cool. And you can see your minimum throttle here. It looks like it's 1148, so you could take that over to Betaflight and make 1148 your minimum throttle on this ESC setup. Uh, but also test your motors and see what your motors do once you get motors hooked up to these ESCs and see what the minimum throttle is when you manually test those. Uh, and you also have flash all button down here, so I'm learning with you guys uh, with this new version of BL Heli Configurator. I'll do that next time. Uh, so we can also write settings and read settings. Do just the ESC read read setting real quick again, and we have 14.8 on here. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect now, and that's it for the Fly Pro all-in-one flight controller guys thanks again for watching uh, this has been an awesome demonstration of this tower I can't wait to get some motors soldered up on this one and uh, put it on my frame of choice and do some flying we're gonna see how good this uh, flight controller is on here but uh, and, and see how awesome the OSD is so thanks again for hanging out with the drone camps channel please do subscribe because we get tons of cool stuff like this each and every week all year long. I'm Justin Davis. I'll see you on the next one.